Perhaps no other race has been so vociferously and tragically disadvantaged throughout history as the natives of the American continents, from disease, war, conquest, and genocides even up to the 20th century. In almost every portion of the continents, the natives have certainly faced existential threats to their entire race. But wait, are Native American Indians or Amerindians even a single race at all? I hope if there's anything you've learned from my series on different classical racial groups, it's that there's very rarely clear-cut divisions between extended regionalized ancestral continuums, or races, and that different groups, sometimes very different groups, intermix to form a new population, and that various waves of migration greatly shape different areas of the globe over the generations. Ever since Westerners first landed on the American continents, the natives were recognized to be distinct from any other population on Earth, and although erroneously labeled Indian by some, it didn't take very long at all to realize that they had not, in fact, landed in India, although the name has stuck throughout the years. There were many different theories for the peopling of the Americas, some politically motivated, of course, but over the years, anthropologists have been able to shape more and more accurate theories on the settlement of humans in this gargantuan landmass, with figures frequently being revised as light is shed on more pertinent information. Now, you've probably heard it said that Native Americans descend from Asians, or sometimes more accurately, Siberians. And although true, this doesn't exactly paint the clearest picture, seeing as to how going back far enough, every indigenous group originates from somewhere else, and the evolution of different groups doesn't just stop for certain populations, at least from a genetic level. And Native Americans are also linked not only to East Asians like the Chinese or Koreans, but also to Europeans, Central Asians, and even the Pacific Islanders in more and more interesting and shocking connections that are quickly being discovered from archaeology genetics and the study of present-day populations. I know we always say this, but depending on your measurement criteria, there are very few genetically homogenous populations on Earth, and the Amerindians are no exception. The very first Native American groups, known as Paleo-Amerindians, are a fusion of two distinct groups, one from East Asia, more closely related to the Mongolians or Chinese, the other located in southern Siberia, known as the ancient North Eurasians, the ancestors of many people groups in Europe, Siberia, and Central Asia, most likely in closest resemblance to Europeans. However, these ancient North Eurasians 20,000 years ago didn't have light skin like the Europeans because extremely fair skin hadn't developed yet, but they did carry other quote-unquote Caucasian phenotypes, especially in terms of body type and facial features, with many early Paleo-Amerindians dated back over 10,000 years ago being predominantly a &E, such as the Kennewick Man, or in other words resembled Western Eurasians more so than Eastern Eurasians. However, the Americas were not settled in a single round of settlement, but rather waves of migration similar to South Asia, or ironically, the modern nations of the Americas we see today. The ancient North Eurasian component is also present in many other peoples throughout Eurasia, specifically in Europe, the Caucasus, Central Asia, and Northern India, mostly correlating with Proto-Indo-European settlement, but the highest proportion today would be in the racially mixed Siberians such as the Ket or Yenisian people located in modern Russia, who have been linked to the Nadnai family of the Americas both genetically and linguistically, strongly implying that they are a remnant population of some of the first Paleo-Amerindian migrants. Archaeogenetic studies on Amerindian remains in the U.S. have indeed confirmed that the Western Eurasian affinity of these proto-Amerindian groups was much higher in the past, although over thousands of years through isolation, genetic drift, and further migration from Northeast Asia, this component has decreased and become more distinct from that found in Europe or elsewhere, leading to a highly distinct population despite their hybrid origins. It's been found that although the Paleo-Siberian peoples, including the Chukchi, Idlemans, and Koryaks, are closely related to many groups in the far north of the Americas, such as the Inuit, they do not share any close genetic relations with other Amerindian groups further south. And this implies that the Eskimo Aleut peoples are descended from the same wave of East Asian migration that gave rise to these groups in Kamchatka and Chukutka, seeing as to how the vast majority of Amerindian peoples have DNA from more ancient Eurasian migrants, not shared with the Kamchatkans. This is the reason that Eskimo Aleut speaking peoples are the closest living Amerindian population to East Asians and generally display moderate amounts of recent East Asian admixture in genetic tests, and their phenotype certainly resembles that of Northeast Asians more than other Amerindians. 
Perhaps most intriguing is the presence of archaic Australo-Melanesian admixture in certain Paleo-Amerindian groups, hypothesized to be higher in the original founding population of the Americas, and hence today can be found pretty much only in the natives of South America, especially those isolated in the Amazon such as the Caritiana, or on the very edge of the continent, relatively isolated for many thousands of years, such as the Yaghan on the island of Tierra del Fuego. Some have hypothesized that this small component, no more than 1-4% to in any particular group, is the result of an ancient Australoid peopling of the Americas, but in reality, the most likely scenario is that this genetic signal is a remnant from the first Eastern Eurasian Siberian migrants, with the Southern Eurasian admixture probably being from South or Southeast Asian admixture beforehand. Others still have argued for a pre-Columbian crossing and settlement of the Americas by Oceanian peoples such as the Polynesians or Melanesians, with contact between Polynesians and Amerindians actually considered quite plausible judging by study on the introduction of certain crops like the sweet potato, and Polynesians did make it as far as Rapa Nui or Easter Island off the coast of Chile after all. However, large-scale migration from the Pacific, or any migration for that matter, is unsubstantiated, and along with migration hypotheses from Stone Age Europe, Egypt, the Middle East, and Africa, remain quite fanciful, but is my personal opinion that there is little credibility in these theories. Now, even though the Amerindian population is descended from multiple waves of migrants with extremely divergent ancestral components, they are generally considered to be a single ancestry or race due to their high degree of genetic clustering and easily recognizable genotype, which is similar to why South Asians are generally recognized as having a uniform South Asian ancestry on genetic tests such as with 23andMe, despite the racial homogeneity and genetic clustering not even being close to that of Native Americans, but with it being more of a spectrum or cline between Western Eurasia and East Asia in the Pacific. Here's my map of Amerindian admixture in the American continents, which I can assure you took a very long time but was still rather fun nonetheless, and I'm quite pleased with the end result. The different intricacies of migration and intermixing made this by far one of the most difficult and time-consuming projects I've ever worked on, but one of the most rewarding as well, and you can bet that I'll be doing more like it in the future. Even though full-blooded Amerindians only make up a majority in a relatively small area of the American continents, when you take into account the Amerindian DNA among other groups in the continent, we can see that regions with an Amerindian genomic majority is actually much larger, encompassing the bulk of southern Mexico, Peru, Bolivia, and many other areas. In Mexico, the southern states generally have more Amerindian admixture than in the north, while in Argentina, northwestern territories are generally more Amerindian than other areas of the country where European immigration penetrated more heavily. Geographic genetic variation of practically every large Latin American country is quite high, even if it is more of a subtle gradation in most areas rather than a hard cutoff, which again is similar to what we see in many areas with a fusion of highly disparate populations, with nearly every group in Latin America having some degree of Amerindian admixture, even self-identified whites and blacks. Due to Latino immigration and internal population growth, the Amerindian component in the United States is actually increasing, although when only measuring the Amerindian populations native to the continental U.S., the component is static, or if anything, slowly going down, since natives have one of the lowest birth rates in the country. There are trace contributions of Amerindian DNA in the gene pools of both Iceland from ancient history and Denmark from more recent times, with a moderate number of Greenlandic immigrants, and both Spain and Portugal now have small Amerindian contributions to their gene pools due to historic backwards migration of mixed-race colonists from Latin America, as well as more recent migration of Latinos such as South American countries like Ecuador, Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia, with there even being a small Amerindian community there as well. Well, there are records of mixed-race individuals of partial Amerindian descent settling in Iberia since at least the 1500s, when many children of the conquistadors situated in Mexico or Peru returned to their Spanish-Portuguese homeland, where many decided to stay, intermarrying into the local population, which is why around 1-2% to of maternal haplogroups of south-central Spain are of Amerindian origin. 
Also of interest is the presence of a significant amount of Amerindian DNA in the African country of Cape Verde, a former Portuguese settlement off the coast of West Africa, where the majority of the population is of mixed Portuguese and Senegambian origin. But there is also a backwards migration from Brazil and other places of the Americas as well. And lastly, the only area of Asia that shows a remarkable level of Amerindian admixture is the Philippines, due to a large number of Latinos from New Spain settling there and intermarrying while it was under colonial Spanish rule. Given another 500 years, Latin America would probably start to appear a bit more like Central Asia in terms of genetic distribution, and a thousand years after that, it would probably be more like the situation of South Asia, wherein everyone is mixed to a certain extent, and there is a bit more of a genetic racial continuum, but there would likely still be different phenotypic classes and ethnic groups similar to the division between the Indo-Aryan, Dravidian, and Austroasiatic groups of India, and this is something I'll probably discuss in a video over races or ethnicities that will probably exist in the future. Coincidentally, Amerindian admixture rates correlate not only with different ethnic groups in Latin America, such as being higher in mestizos, but we can also see a continuum among different levels of the socioeconomic spectrum as well, very similar to the spread of indigenous South Asian Vedoid DNA due to the legacies of the casta and caste system respectively. So all in all, although faced with a tragic past, this isn't the end of the Amerindian lineage, as the Amerindian component, it seems, will only increase and become more widespread over time. The Amerindians are a very interesting group with a diverse, complex, and multifaceted origin, so go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this group. And for today's poll, let me know which larger grouping of Native Americans you'd like to learn more about. And as always, thanks for watching everyone, this has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.